In this video, I want to show you why I created the software Octopus Sequencer. Uh, it was for a very specific reason, and that was to help me to play some difficult grooves. And these are usually kind of specific grooves. I mean, you could put any groove in there. You could put a David Gary Baldy groove in there and use it to break that down, and you'll see some of the methods that you could employ to do that. But very specifically, I wanted it to fill a gap that Logic and Cubase couldn't fill, and that is to program in grooves in the way that you can think of them as a drummer. So Virgil Donati, Thomas Lang, Terry Bozio, Simon Phillips, a lot of these guys construct patterns based around things like playing a repeating group of three, for example, with the right hand, and doing four with the left hand. Um, not necessarily that simple, but things where you have one loop going on and another loop of a different length. So that's really easy to do in Octopus Sequencer because you have four sequences which can um, represent each of your limbs and each one can be set to a different subdivision and repeat length. And so you can basically create these patterns within the software. And there are other features that I've implemented to make breaking down those patterns for when you want to learn to play them uh, a really kind of easy thing. So I'm going to show you some of the techniques that I use to work on this groove in particular. The song we're dealing with is called Alien Hip Hop and it's from the record Serious Young Insects by On The Verge, which is uh, a Virgil Donati thing. And I'm going to play you just the bass drum part because by itself it sounds very simple. So I'll, I'll turn up the 16th note shaker a little bit so you've got a reference. And this is what the bass drum is doing. One. So it's basically one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a deck good get good get good get good get good get get good get good get good get good get good get get good get good get good get good get good get so it just repeats that that's all it is and it's played between the right foot and the left foot alternating but we'll get onto that later so the hands are just playing a straight four with the backbeat on the the two, so like a standard rock groove. So listen to the hands by themselves. So probably one of the first things you ever learn to play on the drums. Easy, right? Just to put the two together. The problem is that it's not playing eighth notes there. It's playing dotted eighth notes, essentially. So every third sixteenth note. So if I turn the shaker up, it's going to probably surprise you how it sounds. So we've got three notes per beat. And what that means is that the length of this is four times three, which is 12. So I have sequence of one set to 12 notes, subdivision 16. Just so you know what's going on here, I have the top two lines set to be closed hi-hat, and I've turned the volume of the second line down a bit. So that's just a way of getting an accent, tap, accent, tap. So accent, tap, accent, tap. And then I have the snare drum here on the third line. Um, so that's 12 notes long, whereas our pattern under here was 16 notes long. So this one's going to have started again before this even gets to the end. So when you hear them together, just watch the red lines and how they don't jump back to the beginning at the same time. See the top one jumped first. And then they're back together there. And this blue text here is basically showing you how many times this has to go around before they both hit one at the same time. And I can turn up a resolve point to mark when they both hit one at the same point. So we get a crash when this pattern kind of loops. So if you wanted to program it into logic, you would have to program in four lots of this over the top of three lots of this. And then you wouldn't have any of the flexibility to do what we're about to do. So if I wanted to learn this pattern from scratch, the first thing I would do is program it in so that I know it's the right kind of thing. And I would just set it on a loop and listen to it and try and sing the bass drum part and the hi-hat part separately and focus in on the two different times. So one way you can do that is to use the volume control. So I'm going to play the groove. So let's sing the hands. Let's turn the, the feet down. So just 
let's get used to that. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. Get comfortable with that time. And then when you're happy with that, start to fade the bass drum in. And if you're finding it hard to hear that bass drum rhythm and pick it out, you can fade the hands down so, so that the bass drum becomes more prominent. Two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two. basically want to switch between hearing those two things and making one the focus and the tempo that you counted and then the other one the focus. There's a, a weird phenomenon with drumming that sometimes it's easier to do something that seems more complicated. Uh, what I mean by that is if you're playing 16th note single stroke roll for example then you would think it would be easier to play just half of that, you know, just one hand by itself. But if you have a click playing and you're doing this, so maybe in that instance, maybe it is easier to play half of it. But what if you take the right hand out and you just lift with the left hand? Then you get this. And that's one of those things that's deceptively difficult to do if you haven't worked at it. Um, so it seems that playing both things together, you can use your right hand to lock into the time and your left hand's just filling in the gaps. Now when you get a pattern like this, that's got a complicated bass drum thing going on, what that means is even if you can play it, you probably don't know what your feet are actually doing. And if you don't know what they're doing or what they're meant to be doing, then it's very hard to correct them if they start to go out. So this is where I'm going to show you some really cool stuff in Octopus Sequencer. So let me do this by muting the top two sequences and I'm going to put in, we're going to use the top line function and if you check out joecrabtree.com software there are some videos on there which basically show you the ins and outs of how Octopus Sequencer works and so you'll see, you get a better idea of what I'm doing. But basically what top line is, if I play this, That's just a snare drum playing on there. If I deselect it on here, now we don't hear anything. And then if I click on top line, it plays something completely different. So where's that ride symbol sign coming from? Well, you double click on here and you get the top line settings. And you'll see in the instructional videos that you can put pictures in and you can have sequences of pictures, but we're gonna use something on here. We're gonna use the rudiment side of it. So what that is, you can select a note on here. So I'm gonna choose a snare drum, electric snare, and if I click the left button here then that sets this to be electric snare. And the right is currently set to ride cymbal. I want to go and set that to acoustic snare. So now we have two different snare sounds for the right hand and the left hand. And to trigger those you just have to type in either capital or lowercase R or L into this pitch list and just separate them by spaces. So if I type R, capital space L, and then enter So basically these two notes here are triggering these two sounds in a loop. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So if I turn the click up, let's make the click a carabelle so it stands out. So I can replicate what I did on the snare drum by turning the volume of the left hand snare drum down. So that's the right hand part. If you want to hear the left hand part by itself, we can turn the right down. Now, the way this is set up, it says looping all pitches here. And what that means is no matter where this is, you could have one note in there, 
and it would go through this loop. Like every time a new note is played, it just plays the next one in the sequence. So I can type in, for example, right, left, right, right, capital L, right, left, left. So the lowercase ones, and hit enter when you're done, the lowercase ones are going to play the tap volume. So if I turn the tap volume down for these, now we're going to have a paradiddle, an accented paradiddle. You can turn up the tap, so you can just hear the right hand part, for example, or the left hand part. You want the right hand part. So that's just the right hand part by itself. So we're going to use this. I'm going to clear this sequencer and we're going to actually use this to play these notes on bass drum. I'm going to root sequencer two to top line drums and deselect it on the drums and unmute it. So now when I click on here, clear this list, I'm going to set, or well, I already have the kick set to kick drum one and the hi-hat set to acoustic kick. I'm going to turn up the accent volumes on both of them. We're not using the tap volume. Um, and by the way, if you can't see these volume controls, just click this button here. This decides whether you're going to use the volume selector down here or the accent and tap volumes. So if I type into here, kick, space, hat, enter, then this pattern is now going to be played between two bass drums. So you can hear the different sounds in the bass drum. So if we want to know what just the right kick, the right kick is playing, then we can bring the volume of the hi-hat foot down. So there's an exercise. Turn the cowbell up a little bit. So one, two, 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 get good, take get that, do, get to, get to, take good, 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 get to, get to, get to, get to, take good, take good, get to. See, because it's an odd number of uh, notes on here, it switches which foot is the lead. So the first time round, it's on the click. This time, get to, get to, get and then it's off the click. Do, get to, get to, take good. So it's playing the other half of the pattern. So that's an exercise to work on. So we have the click going. So I've just come to the kit and I'm just going to play the right foot part by itself and I'm going to sing in my head the whole so that I can figure out where to place it. And you can also see on these little LED, LEDs down here um, that it's playing between the two kicks. So now let's see what the left foot part sounds like. So I'm going to turn the left foot up, which is the H, and bring down the volume of the right foot. And we'll do the same thing. Three, four, one. Actually, start it on the beginning. Uh, okay, so with this one, of course, the right foot would lead on the one, so we're not going to start on the click. So I'll let it go around once. So that's a way of just working on the feet individually and then you can put them together and then you can try and do that exercise underneath the hands playing the normal beat and that's where it gets tricky. Sounds like this if you just have, let's just set the right foot part again. In fact we'll have both bass drums and we'll hear the whole pattern. Bring the click down. Now, 
Where it gets difficult is the fact that you're playing kind of different places in a triplet. Because if you think of the hands as playing one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, then sometimes the bass drums come in with the hands, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Sometimes it's coming on the let, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, like that. And sometimes it's coming in between, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. But it's, I find it quite difficult to hear that with the hi-hat sound. And so one thing I like to do in here is root. I'm going to put both of these notes on here. So instead of using this to play a quieter hi-hat note, we can do it in the top line. So let me give you an example of that. If I root sequence of one to top line, take it out of drums. Actually, leave it in drums because the snare drum still wants to play, but I'll turn the volume of the actual top line down. And I'm going to go in here, clear that, and set. Uh, let's find the hi-hat. There we go. Set that to the right hand. So one way to get that accent and tap pattern would be to type right, space, small, right, and use velocity, the accent and tap. So we have this. So you can see I can turn the tap button up. But what I actually wanted to show you was I like to do this and route it to pitch. So then we can, um, let's clear that and put in two notes. Add that one. Let's have that one. Uh, take it out of the drums. So now we're going to hear bum, 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 bum. Now, weirdly enough, I find it easier to tell if that's gone out of time than, than if the hi-hat's gone out of time. So I would use this to practice too. I would bring the tempo down, set it at 80, for example. And you can also hear whether you're starting on the high note or the low note, which would be an accent or a tap. So this would be my practice session now, would be to go into this and bring the volume of the left foot down. So I'm just working on the right foot part of the pattern against the groove. And I'm really trying to sing what the this pitch part. So I would play the right foot part by itself. Or maybe I'd play both feet together and try and sing da, 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 da over what I'm doing. And then I'd just work on the right foot against that and then just the left foot. This is what it sounds like, just the right foot. So you can see for the first two loops of this, it plays with the right hand on every note apart from the one which is in, the, in between the left foot notes. Just have another listen. And then it goes out. So the third time, So the, the second and third times around this, it plays on the let. So ba, go ba, go ba, go ba, go ba. And it's always got that extra note that's in, a, in an odd place. And then the last time round, uh, it's on the middle note of the triplet. So just really pay attention to how that sounds. So with the note, on the let, go da, go da, go da. And then on the middle note. And then back on it. So really all we've got to do is find out where that one stray note goes in relation to the others each time and work on that. And in the long run, when we start to put it all together, that will really help solidify this pattern. Another thing you could do is have just the right bass drum playing in the sequencer and fill in the left bass drum. So overall, you should be hearing the whole bass drum pattern and you can tell if you go wrong because suddenly there's big gaps in it. So I'll let it run through once and then I'll add the left bass drum.
if you check out the instructional videos at joecrabtree.com slash software, um, I show you how each bit of the top line works, uh, how basically the whole software works. So you'll find all the different things you can do. Um, but one last thing, for example, if you get this groove down and you've, you've got the whole thing going on and then you want to solo over the bass drum part, here's an example of how you could do that. So we'll have muted the groove. We'll have both feet playing full volume. put the tempo back up. So let's say we're in 16th notes and let's say we want to play like paradiddles and things. So I'm going to set the length of sequence of three to four notes long. It's at 16th notes. I'm going to draw in four notes. I've uh, rooted it to drums. And we're going to use, the, well, there we have a paradiddle programmed in already. So let's turn the accent volume up and the tap volume to like half way or something. So this is what it sounds like to play a paradiddle over the top of the bass drums. And we can turn the general level down. So that might be something I'd work on. We could turn the tempo back down. And if you find that the two different snare drums aren't different enough to hear, then you could set the ride symbol for the right hand, or a, a, let's do it between the tom and the snare. Or a ride symbol, where's the ride? There we go, set the right hand to be the ride. And if you wanted to be more adventurous, you could put in, uh, you know, a five note grouping. So right, left, right, left, left. So that's going to take a while to come around. Um, or you could put in a seven note grouping, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And obviously you've got four sequences here and you've got four sets of the top line features, so you can make up the, some really ridiculous patterns with this. Anyway, that's getting into the really advanced stuff. So I've got to go and work on the actual groove. So I'm gonna leave you with uh, that as some kind of food for thought and um, hopefully I'll get some comments about the software, ideas for you know how I can improve it in the future. Uh, so until next time, enjoy.